Hello, welcome to the second part of my two parts video looking at cultural literature and all kinds of references that you can find in the currently airing drama A Dream of Splendor, Meng Hua Lu. Believe it or not, this is my third time filming this part of the video. Yesterday I did one with my Song Dynasty look. Everything was out of focus. Today I did another one just about half an hour ago and all the audio is I do think the spirit of Gu Qianban is trying to stop me from making this video because in this video I'm going to talk extensively about exam system, official ranking, and how incredible his achievement is. And he probably is too shy as a character to have other people say so many good things about him, therefore he stopped me twice. But that's not going to stop Avenue X. So this is my third attempt recording this video. If you watch a lot of Chinese period drama, you probably are already familiar or at least have heard about the exam system, Ke Ju. This system was created back in Sui Dynasty as a means for the emperor to select the talented people out of the mass population. It wasn't really until North Song, Bei Song, where our story is setting, that this has become a nationwide operational, fully functioning and dominant talent selection system. And at the time of its invention, it really is an advanced and very forward-thinking system. Instead of being born out of an aristocrat family and inherit your father's or your grandfather's position, now it has become possible for anybody who's well-learned to get that position. But in ancient China, it still isn't possible for everybody to be a scholar and take exams. Number one requirement is you have to be male. So that takes out half of the population for possibilities. Second thing is you have to be a liangren, coming from a clean background. You can be dirt poor, but you cannot be a criminal. You cannot belong to the low jianji class. Or for some times in the history, if you come from shanghu, which is business, commercial, your family is in the business of selling things. You are also not allowed to take part in this. Although at certain times, the rule changes and gets loosened up. And even if you are from this kind of background, you can still take part, but those are exceptions. So being a male, being a clean background male, and then you go learn. Around episode five and six, when you see our male lead character Gu Qianban on screen for the first time, meeting and having that long conversation with his biological father. You see how highly the father thinks of this son he has. Why? Because he said, when I was 26, I got to jing shi level, and you were only 18 when you got that, and you were er jia di wu ming. You are destined for great things, and you are wasting your talent doing your current job. When you try to climb the ke ju ladder, you have to go through four rounds of exams. The first round of exam happens at the lowest level of administration. If you pass that exam, you become a xiu cai, literally meaning great material. At that point, you can already declare you are a well-learned person. Then on the second round of exam, that is on the provincial level, if you manage to pass that exam, you become Ren, elevated person. And that already is something you can brag about. A lot of people just stop there. When they fail the third round, a couple of years later, when the exam comes around, they can take the exam again. If they fail again, take the exam again. Some people take the exam until they're 50 and 60 years old and still doesn't advance. If you're lucky enough, passing the third round of exam, which is on national level, you become gong shi. Direct translation would be like worshipped gentlemen. But there is still a difficult exam ahead of you that is extremely grueling. That is called 电视, literally meaning an exam taking place in a palace. That means the person who is supervising that particular exam is none other than the emperor in reign himself. And at the end of that exam, if you 中了, which means you end up on a list that is like the pool for the emperor to select his other future subjects and officials, you become jing shi. And this exam doesn't come around every year, usually every three years, sometimes more because the emperor decided to be generous, sometimes less, further dividing the jing shi into different rankings in North Song Dynasty, not in every dynasty. It works roughly like this. The top levels are called jia ke, which means the top category. And within that, you also divide it into multiple levels. 
The first level is called yi jia, one jia, and there can only be three people. Number one is called zhuang yuan, number two, bang yan, number three, tan hua, which is what Ouyang Xu is in this drama, making him a super achiever. Then, er jia, second jia. Usually, that list can include about 100 people, depending on different exams, different dynasties, that number can vary. It gets publicized on a big piece of paper sticking out there and everybody can go and just look at it. Who is number one? Who is number two? Who is number 113? For our male lead character, Gu Tianfan, of that year he took the exam, he got on the second jia list, number five. Er jia di wu ming, which means he was in total, the eighth that year of the entire nation's exam, four rounds of exam, competing with people who are 40 years old, 50 years old, who've been studying all their life. And he was only 18 when he got that. To put that in perspective, there are rarely anybody getting jing shi in the entirety of Chinese history before they are 20. And they are all very famous, such as Wang An Shi, such as Su Shi, such as Su Shi's younger brother, Su Zhe, they all got it before they were 20 or just right on the brink of being 20 years old. And that's already recorded history as a miracle. With all that in mind, Gu Qianfan did it when he was 18. And to make it even more unbelievable, he's also a master swordsman. What are the chances of that kind of person existing in real life? Not really. It only happens in drama land. Now let's talk about the following thing. Can you get an official position with that? Not every Jing Shi can get a position because there are only that many positions in the political system. If there are people occupying that position, even if you are the highest achiever of that year, it doesn't mean you can create a position out of nowhere. So now let's talk about the official rankings. Guan, as supposed to commoners, Ming. We are also gonna use Gu Qianfan as the example. The first time he was dressed in an official uniform, greeting the emperor in court. You can see he was dressed in green and that tells you he is either ranked six or seven on the whole nine level ranking. The official rankings usually take the jiu ping system, nine different levels. The smaller the number, the higher it is. If you are yi pin, one pin, that means you're the highest level of official possible. Usually you are the premier of the country. Within the nine levels, each level can be further divided into zheng and cong. Zheng is the proper one. Cong is the subordinate one, the lower one. Therefore, you can say the nine level of officials can be further divided into 18 different levels. So climbing this ladder is the next leg of the adventure of scholars. During the particular part of North Song where the story is set, if you're ranked level three and above, your uniform is colored in purple. If you're level four and five, your uniform is red. Six and seven, green. Eight and nine, blue. When Gu Qianfan got promoted for the first time in this drama, before that he was wearing green after he got red and he also get a silver fish pocket. When Chen Lian went to see Zhao Pan'er, telling her the good news, she's very excited. She said, wow, jie fei ying yu dai. Jie fei means borrow red. Ying yu dai means silver fish pocket. During Song Dynasty, there is a special award that the emperor can give you to compliment your achievement. If he cannot really lift you up from your ranking because there isn't a position left there for you to fill, but then you've done something that I think really deserves rewarding, I give you the power to jie You remain on level six, but you can wear level five and level four clothes that is in red, also with the silver fish pocket. So that's the idea of jie a special kind of promotion. And if you manage to climb up to level three and above, then you will be in purple and then wearing gold fish pocket. It's just a way of identification, of showing off your ranks, another way to discriminate against other people who are lower than you. Later, when he got his second promotion after he almost got killed protecting his father, he became the leader of security office, now formally, properly a wu ping and 
and the lower part of Wu Ping, Cong Wu Ping, so he could wear red for real, according to his rank, not according to the emperor's special favor. In the drama, he is about 30 when he got to level 5, which everything considered in Chinese traditional system is a great achievement. If you have to think about Wu Ping equal to today's China's Guan level, it's like a mayor. And in North Song, it is true that along the line of the nine levels, the dividing gap of payment of benefit that has this significant jump is along the line of six and five. If you belong to level six, you're still considered to be the small officials. You don't have that much of a benefit. Once you jump over that gap, ending up on level five and above, it's a different world for you. Just adding another layer of buff on our male lead character in terms of how impossible it is to have a person like that in real life. So Liu Yifei's bro, Zhao Pan'er, is a super lucky person in that sense that she doesn't only just manage to get out of her registry <laughs> as a official entertainer before, she managed to have the number one boyfriend as the third one on the list of that year's exam. Future husband is 30 years old, level 5 official, 18 years old, Jing Shi, and a swordsman, and so good looking. And she herself is so good looking. It's like getting hit by two meteor rights at the same time. Since we're already talking about official rankings and social systems and societal structures, let's quickly mention the idea of Guanji official entertainers or official prostitute, whichever sounds better to your ears. Guan official Ji prostitute. They are a type of women that basically are state-owned slaves. The origin of those women can come from either inherited from their parents, the mother is already a guanji, the daughter is born into the system, or they used to be commoners. For example, wives and daughters of an official who was found guilty of something. The guy could get exiled or executed, imprisoned in all kinds of punishment. And then unfortunately, what comes to the women of this family is they get taken in by the state system, become a state slave, often a state prostitute or entertainer. And your most important function is first serve at all kinds of occasions that's held by the government, maybe a banquet, maybe a ceremony, all kinds of celebration festivals. Because you're owned by the state, you have no way to say no, you just have to do the job. That is your number one job. And the fact is, the better you are at it, the more famous you may be. You even may be super rich and living in a very luxurious condition, having servants, always being around high level people of that society. You're talking about poetry, you're talking about music, but that doesn't change the fact that you are a slave in state. You are not a liang, a commoner. You don't really have any personal rights. The second important job for Guanji in North Song is selling liquor for the state. During North Song, it is not allowed for any people to privately brew liquor and sell it. You can brew and drink it and at your own expense of poisoning yourself, but you cannot sell it. If you do, capital punishment. In the capital, there are specific venues, restaurants, other entertainment places that have the permit from the government to brew their own liquor and sell that. And the government would take money from it. So this is a big source of tax income for the government. And the government would also hire a lot of guanji, the official entertainers, to be around those restaurants and other nightclubs to encourage customers buying alcohol, drinking, spending money. Isn't that incredible that you have a nightclub beer selling girl thousand years ago in Chinese capital back then. And it may come to your surprise that although they're called state prostitutes, they cannot actually sleep with any officials. I mean, they can sleep with commoners. If your rich businessman comes in, you have a lot of money you want to give to this famous state entertainer, buy her a night or whatever, that can happen, but cannot happen between a state leveled, whichever level it is, one to nine, official and a guanji. If that got found out, strictly speaking by law, it's a very big offense and the guy can lose his job and his official position. During North Song, it has been used multiple times during a couple of different political factions fight. One person wants to attack the other person and his party. 
he goes out and dig out the dark history. One of the most important thing they would use is he had slept with this official prostitute back in that year. For those women, if they are very successful, they're very talented, they're a poet, they're musician, they may live on the surface a very good life, but doesn't mean they have freedom at all. And the more talented you are, the less likely you can get out of it because people are not blind. If you're that beautiful a woman, an entertainer, the state wouldn't want to let you go. You're making so much money for them. And for those women, the only way that they can go back to being a normal person is the official who's in charge of that part of the business in that location that she's located in allows her to go. Sign her paper saying you are now free and you're a commoner, you Cong Liang, which happened to Zhao Pengar when she was 16. As the story had it set up, talk about ancient time and the dark times and classes and the ways of exploiting women in Chinese history. Now we've talked about the Kuju system and the official ranking. Let's talk about the historical event that happened in this drama that actually is recorded in writing. Between the mid teen episodes number and the mid 20s, we see this case called Mao Yao An, hat demon case. That is this dark hat floating around with fireworks in the drama's version, causing panic in the capital. This is based on real history that did get recorded in Song Dynasty. The specific time was May 10, 18. And the first sighting of this hat demon is not in Dongjing, eastern capital, but Xijing, western capital, Luoyang. A man claimed he saw this flying saucer shape that's our current language, back then it's a hat demon, hovering on the street at night and emitting light and flying around. What does that sound like, hey? Then the story starts to go out of control. People say this thing can eat people, can kill people, can turn people into wolves. <laughs> and everybody in Luoyang was scared. And it got so big that the rumor leaked to Eastern capital and got the emperor really worried because he really is a very superstitious person. And this drama <laughs> took that historical record and put its own spin on it. Today, in our opinion, when we read that record, it just sounds very much like a UFO. Extraterrestrial civilization happened to visit a thousand years ago, human world in Song Dynasty. High civilization aliens happened to drop by and didn't get impressed by us and left not knowing that they created such a mess for the people back then. To conclude these two videos on Meng Hualu, we have to talk a little bit about poetry and literature. This drama by episode 26 has already used quite a few poetry references. Here I'm only gonna mention one, and it's a very important and good poem. And if you're learning Chinese, I highly, highly, highly recommend you recite the eight lines from this poem. In the drama episode 24-25, when the father of Gu Qianfan decided to lure people to kill him, he recited four lines from a poem. And this poem is written by Li Bai back in Tang Dynasty called Xia Ke Xing, the journey of the Xia Ke. Xia Ke, you probably are very familiar with that already, the kind of warrior who goes out fighting the war for justice for whatever on himself. This poem is much, much longer. But the best known part of this poem is the first eight lines. Zhao Ke Man Hu Ying, Wu Go Shuang Xue Ming, Yin An Zhao Bai Ma, Sa Ta Ru Liu Xing, Shi Bu Sha Yi Ren, Qian Li Bu Liu Xing, Shi Liao Fu Yi Qu, Shen Tang, Shen Yu Ming. It talks about this Xia Ke person who goes out for a mission and he travels a long way to do it. Zhao Ke Man Hu Ying, the person who comes from Zhao wears this type of hat band that is without decoration. So it's a type of look at the time that shows where this person comes from. Wu Gou Shuang Xue Ming. Wu Gou is his weapon. Shuang Xue Ming, bright as frost and snow. So that's a shining cold metal weapon. Ying An Zhao Bai Ma, silver saddle on the white horse. Sa Ta Ru Liu Xing. It describes the look of him riding the horse like a shooting star. Then the next four lines are the best known four lines of this poem. Shi bu sha yi ren, qian li bu liu xing. Shi bu, ten steps. Sha yi ren, kill one person. So he can kill one person in ten steps, or every ten steps he kills one person, does not matter which version it is, it's already showing you 
him in action. 10,000 li miles. 不 no or not. 流行 here can be explained as getting stopped. So he is unstoppable for a thousand miles traveling, killing his enemies. 事了拂一去, when the mission is accomplished. 拂一, 拂 is brush over. 一, clothe. 去, leave. So after he's achieved whatever he wants to achieve, mission accomplished, he just walks away. 深藏, 深雨, 明, deeply burying his body, not like he's dying, but basically his physical existence and fame. So he did what he wants to do. He doesn't bother to stay. He just walks away and not letting people know he's done it. So often, the 事了拂一去,深藏深与名 line gets quoted in all kinds of occasions. Definitely a good line to kiss up people. If you say that to a Chinese person under the right circumstances, they're gonna get very, very happy and impressed. So this would conclude my two videos on the drama A Dream of Splendor, Meng Hua Lu, on things that I think is interesting to explain to my audiences. And I don't say this in my videos at all usually, but Considering this is already the third time of me filming this video, just give me a thumb up if you really like it, that's all. And like I promised, if there are more things in the next, at this point I'm shooting 14 episodes of the drama, I can make another video on it. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.